Hello everybody, welcome back to the video. Um, today I'm going into York on my own, I'm doing a little solo visit. So a few months ago I had tickets to go and see the Shard Lake theatre show in York. Um, it's called Sovereign, it's an adaptation, a theatre stage adaptation of the Shard Lake novel Sovereign uh, by CJ Sansom. And I was really, really excited to go, really looking forward to it. And then, um, unfortunately, for circumstances to do with kind of private circumstances, I couldn't go in the end. So I had to sell the tickets to somebody else. But one of the things they did do was they recorded one of the performances, one of the live shows, and they are doing screenings of the live performance or the recorded performance in York this week. And the tickets were free. So I bought a couple of tickets for the free screening. And unfortunately, nobody can make it today. So I'm going on my own. I'm taking my new camp, my new microphone with me. And I finally have a wind muffler. So hopefully that should mean that the audio while we're out and about walking around York should be a lot better. But I thought it'd be a really nice kind of addition to the video that I did a couple of weeks ago about the Disney adaptation that's coming out soon of Shard Lake. And what the differences are between a TV show, a theatre show, what the differences are between the TV, the theatre show and the book. So yeah, I'm going to that today. But it's now currently 11. Sorry, that's the floor creaking. That is not me creaking. <laughs> it's currently 11 o'clock and um, I have a train to York booked for half past 11. So I'm going to try and film in public. We'll see. It's weird. I used to feel like I didn't want to film in public at all. And now I feel a little bit more confident filming in public when I've got like Tom with me or my sister with me. And then it feels very vulnerable to be completely on my own in public and to vlog. So there might not be much talking to camera unless I manage to find a little kind of quiet nook somewhere. Um, it might be a lot of voiceovers, but we'll see. We will see. I will try my best for you all. Anyway, I'm going to grab my stuff together and I'll probably speak to you again when I'm on the train platform. And in this footage, I didn't realise that by having my headphones plugged into my phone, it wouldn't actually record my voice. Should have realised that, but I didn't. Clearly, my brain wasn't functioning 100% that day. All I was basically saying is that I feel really awkward vlogging when there were teenagers on the other end of the platform. You really didn't miss anything, honestly. For the little bit of train journey into Huddersfield, I actually listened to a podcast. It's called Real Life Ghost Stories. It kind of blends between people's actual experiences with the paranormal and also kind of legends and very famous ghost stories and things like that. It's quite interesting. But actually then when I transferred onto the train into York, I continued reading Anne Bronte's Agnes Grey. Um, I had started it a few days earlier and I absolutely loved this book it was such a short novel and I'm really sad that it was as short as it was because I really loved Anne Bronte's writing style I loved the main character Agnes Grey and the fact that it was a love story as well it's just it's great and I've never read it before and I feel like it's one of those novels that not many people have read and yet it deserves so much more um what's the word it deserves so much more celebration and recognition and I'm actually really looking forward now to reading The Tenant of Wildfell Hall because I've not read that one either so I'm looking forward to exploring that next. For me, I think this bridge really signifies York. I always feel like I'm walking into a different historical time period when I walk across that bridge. There's just something about it. Um, and this was one of the cafes on the bridge. It's what would have been one of the old toll bridges once upon a time. And it's been made into a lovely little cafe. And I sat here and you could see the boats going under the bridge. And it was just a lovely little spot. It was so quiet and with the door open, it was such a beautiful day. And I just sat there and I had a really nice sandwich. It was, it tasted really lovely and homemade it was kind of full of chicken and bacon and salad and it was really tasty and I just sat there and enjoyed my sandwich I had a I think I had like a iced tea or something like that and yeah read my book and just enjoyed myself a little bit it was about one o'clock by the time I got into the cafe so I was really ready for some lunch and I knew I wasn't going to be eating dinner until quite late so this really kind of helped me feel refueled ready for the afternoon
Hello everyone. Um, I'm now in the centre of York. Um, I found this tiny little corner <laughs> next to a building. Um, it is absolutely heaving in the centre of the city and I am nowhere near confident enough to talk that confidently in public. Um, but I've come to the York Castle Museum Gardens. York Museum Gardens? Can't remember what it's called. But yeah, I've come into the York Museum Gardens. I think is what it's called. Basically, it's where St Mary's Abbey used to be. Now, if you know the Sovereign Book, if you've read the Sovereign Book, you will know that most of the events that happen in this book happen in the ruins of St Mary's Abbey. And so that's why I wanted to come here just to show you a little bit of the building. So these are the ruins here that you can see. Um, this is actually where Matthew Shard Lake would have been walking. Um, at the time that he was here, the windows were being removed of their stained glass, if you remember that scene. I'm not going to say too much about the book, so I don't want to have any spoilers, but there is a scene that includes stained glass that's being removed from the windows. These are the windows in question. Um, and yeah, it's in here that Matthew comes and stables his horse. It's being very much used as a store building rather than being used for any kind of like religious purposes, because obviously it's in the middle of the dissolution. And yeah, it's just... Uh, a really cool building so I wanted to kind of come and show you a little bit more of it but like I say it is incredibly busy around here um, and I'm just not sure how confident I feel holding the camera up to myself and talking so yeah I'm gonna have a little bit of wander around and show you some of the architectural details in a little bit more detail <laughs> I do it this way around as well I can't really see people that are looking at me either um, so there's a building behind oh there's a pigeon above me. I'm really hoping this pig pigeon doesn't poo on me. Also, what is it with people? I think it's like a human thing that if you see somebody in an area doing something, it's like the curiosity factor. People can't help but come and have a look at what you're doing. Come and have a little, you know, kind of gander. They try and make it try and make it look like they're not looking at what you're doing, but it's really obvious <laughs> that's what they're doing. So, yeah, um, people are looking at me a little bit, but people stare at you no matter what you do in life so but yes I'm going to now have a wander around this pigeon's annoying me he's up there <laughs> it's like trying to intimidate me why am I why is a pigeon trying to intimidate me that's just rude <laughs> it's gone now anyway right I'll have a wander around Anglian Tower. I seem to have found myself in a little bit where we can really get a good look at the old York walls. Which are I suspect that these bits here are the older parts. I don't know. But I think the bigger stones on the top are the more quote unquote modern bits <laughs> as opposed to the Roman parts. This is pretty cool. I'll be honest, I've got no idea where I'm going. I'm just wondering, having a little wonder. Oh, okay, I found an entrance. We found this old building here, St. Leonard's Hospital. Built at the expense of John Romanus, died in 1255. This building comprising a vaulted crypt of the chapel above formed part of St. Leonard's Hospital, at what time the largest hospital in the north of England, originally known as St. Peter's. It was refounded as St. Leonard's by King Stephen and dissolved in 1540. Wow. Under here, maybe? Oh, look at this. Sorry, I had some kind of bizarre lock on the quality. Oh, God, this is amazing to be able to walk around in here. Oh, well, it's giving me the chills a little bit. I mean, Slightly ruined by the modernity of a car, <laughs> but you know, such is life. Yeah, so this building, I think it said it was rebuilt in 1540. Yeah, 
managed to find a little historical area that's actually nice and quiet. <laughs> It's actually tucked away a little bit, which is quite nice. Um, Main Abbey was just really busy. I just didn't really feel comfortable filming in public there. But as usually happens, I've managed to find a nice little kind of tucked away area to have a chat. So I was hoping to have more of a walk around York. I was hoping to go to some bookshops um, and do some other bits and pieces. But I hadn't anticipated what time the train got into York. So the train didn't get in until quarter to one. And then the show starts at two. So I literally had some food. I've come here and had a wander around. It's now time to head to the theatre. I want to go to the toilet before the show starts. And it's literally next door. <laughs> so it's fine. I've got plenty of time. What are these walls here? Look at this bit of wall here. I mean, it looks very old, but I'm not sure exactly how old that will be. It's so hard to be able to tell here because there's so many like patchwork areas of building. Um, and like this bit here is 1500s, so is that earlier, older? Is that younger? Who knows? But it's so cool. I love York for this. Like you can find like little pockets of history just dotted everywhere. And I haven't paid to come in here. This is totally free to come into. It's just wonderful. Yeah, it's one of my favourite cities by far. Maybe that's because I'm York from Yorkshire. Um, but yeah. It doesn't hurt that it's an absolutely beautiful sunny day either. <laughs> oh, it's even the younger old history is beautiful. The red bricks, stunning as well. So that's what the old hospital looks like from the outside. We've just been in under there. It's just so cool. Ah, the library and archives. <laughs> right, I need to find the theatre. So I got to the York Theatre Royal and honestly it was so much busier than I was expecting. It was almost a sold out screening and that quite surprised me but it was so good to see so many CJ Sansom fans there. And look at that artwork for the show and the Theatre Royal as well. I've never been here before. It was just absolutely beautiful. I was very excited to be right at the front of the dress circle as well. I'm back at the train station again. Um, I'm trying to speak into my microphone so hopefully that's working okay. Man, that was a schlep to get back. So the show, I think I said this earlier, I didn't realise the show was going to be three hours long. So basically I had kind of half an hour to get from the theatre back to the train station. Now, the train station is literally a 10 minutes walk from the theatre, but me being me, I'm very short and I, it takes me double the amount of time to walk anywhere that normal people do. Um, and I don't know, I just have this thing about travel. I like to be where I need to go, like, earlier than I need to be there. Um, there are people walking down the platform towards me, so I'm not going to be able to talk for very long. Um, but I um, really, really, really enjoyed the performance. I thought it was amazing. I've got a lot of thoughts. Uh, all of them really positive, but just a lot of thoughts about how they adapted it for the stage. Um, so I think what I'm probably going to do is... Um, I've written things down... I Sorry, I hope you can hear me over the announcements. I'm hoping that the microphone just picks up my voice. Um, I have written down a lot of thoughts during the interval. I wrote down a lot of things that I thought and this, that and the other. And then I'm also going to sit here. I'm going to have a drink because I haven't had a drink since lunchtime. <laughs> and I'm going to write down some more thoughts on the second half of the show. Um, and then, yeah, I will, when I get home, maybe like tomorrow, um, yeah, probably tomorrow, or maybe, maybe later tonight, it depends. I've obviously got to go to another meeting now for one of my marketing clients when I get back to Huddersfield. So maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow, I'll sit down and I'll properly discuss the show. Um, but overall, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. I thought they did such a good job for a community production, as in, I don't think any of the actors were professional, actually. I think a lot, some of them were, I think like the main characters, the person who played Shard Lake, the actor who played Jack Barack, Tamsin, um, maybe a few more. I think they were professional actors. In fact, funnily, really funny, as I was walking back from the theatre to the train station, I walked past the actor who played Tamsin. Tamsin, what was her? Reedborn. I walked past that actor and I was like, where do I recognise her face for? And then I was like, oh my God, has she got a twin? Because I've just seen her in the theatre. And then it rem I remembered that actually it was a recording. So it actually was her. I walked past her on the street in York. So that was quite funny. I kind of wanted to turn around and be like, excuse me, I've just seen you perform as Tamsin. You were fantastic. She was, she was absolutely brilliant, actually, that actor. Um, 
yeah, so I really, really enjoyed it. And now I'm going to sit, I'm going to have something to drink and I'm going to maybe read a bit more of my book. And then it's about an hour's train ride back to Huddersfield. And then that's it. So I will pick back up later. So you could probably tell it's a new day. It's obviously not evening right now. I had intended on Thursday night to come home and instantly give you my thoughts or maybe even be able to give you my thoughts on the train on the way home. However, it was absolutely packed on the train. And also, I had to come back from... In, get off the train in Huddersfield. I had to go to a meeting for work straight after that. I didn't get in until like quarter to nine at night. Then I had to have some dinner. And just by the time all that had finished, it was far too late to be sitting down and I also really want to do the show justice in talking about it so it's now Saturday morning I had a very busy Friday so I couldn't film on Friday either but we're here I've had time to think it through I wrote some notes down both in the interval and after the show so I've got some really good thoughts on the play and I want to discuss them with you so the overall thought that I have is how fantastically well the subject matter translated onto the stage. The fact that in a book, everything becomes very much your perception. You have these visions and imaginations and you see the scenes and you see the people and, and the interactions. And a lot of what brings a book to life is the reader, not necessarily just the content on its own. And so I was a little bit unsure as to how they would be able to translate it to the stage and have it still feel very much like a Shard Lake book or a Shard Lake world for want of a better word and they did it really really well I just I instantly knew what I was dealing with all the characters they'd been so sympathetic and true to the original material to the characters nobody was missed out nobody was changed um um, even the dialogue, like it's been a while since I've read Sovereign, um, but even some of the dialogue I can pick up as being like, yep, that's exactly from the book. And so I really thought that that was excellent in the way that they'd handled the source material and created a stage play from that source material. It's something that I have such high hopes that they're going to do in the TV show. I'm not sure they will do as successfully as what the York Theatre Royal Production Company did for Sovereign on the stage. So we'll just have to wait and see when it comes out on Disney what it's going to be like. But I can wholeheartedly say, having not even expected there to be a stage performance of a Shard Lake book, it just worked so well. It was brilliant. And I'm so sad that I didn't get to see it in person as a stage show. But I'm so thankful that York Theatre Royal put some money into their kind of um, production budget to be able to film it and, and screen it to people for free. Because we were sat in the York Theatre Royal, but obviously it was like a big cinema screen that was up on the stage. And at no point did I... F you kind of get lost in it, I suppose, in the same way when you're watching a film at the cinema, you kind of get sucked into the film. It was kind of like that. And they'd done really clever camera angles and things as well. So I, when it very first started, the camera was like at the back of the audience and it showed the full stage. And I thought, oh, is that how it's going to be like all the way through? Are we just going to be like at the back of the audience watching? And I thought, I'm not sure if I'm going to enjoy it that much if it's like that. But no, they did have a couple of pan shots of like the wide stage, but they had lots of up close camera work. And I don't know how they filmed it because there was a live audience there as well. And one thing that I know from working in the arts and events industry is that it's really hard to get filmographers and photographers that are able to kind of take good photographs of a production going on without disturbing the audience because a lot of the time if you've got a photographer walking around or a camera assistant walking around it's very distracting for the audience and so I don't know how they managed that but they obviously did but it was it was like watching a film in many ways because it was they'd got close-ups of of the main characters and different angles from different sides of that I think it was probably better watching it on screen than it probably was being in the audience to be honest um although I suspect that they're very very different kind of experiences as well and I would have loved to have been in the audience I really would but I also really loved seeing it on the screen as well and actually if York Theatre Royal ever put that onto a DVD or made it available like on their website for some money I would 100% pay you know 
a tenner, £20, for a copy of that production to be able to watch myself again because I really, really enjoyed it. One of the other things that I absolutely loved, and I think it's what made this stage show so unique, was the fact that it took place in King's Manor at the site that the book takes place as well. There's the, the ruins of the the, the church and then just to the side of the church is King's Manor but it was it was inside that courtyard that the, the action took place the actual show um the stage was set and they just I mean maybe the source material the fact that the so much of the show takes place in York just makes it a lot easier in order to do a stage show like that but they just used the set so incredibly well they had so there was, as the backdrop of the show, there were some doors that went into King's Manor. There was a staircase, like a really old kind of Tudor medieval staircase that went up to an upper floor with some doors off it. And they had a lot of the action coming in and out of the doors and going up and down the stairs. They used a partial kind of stair as um, being halfway up a hill at one point and... But it just, it used the space so well. I'd exp I had, to be honest, I totally expected it to be a raised professional stage and them to be stood on the stage performing and it to feel very much like a stage play or a stage show or... You know, have you ever been to one of those, like, theatre in the gardens? I've been to them and I've worked at them, at many of them because a lot of stately homes have theatre in the gardens. And that's like, it'll be a, a Shakespeare play or something like that. And all the action takes place on the stage. Or sometimes it comes off the stage and goes around a bit, but primarily most of the stuff happens on the stage. And I expected it to be like that, but it wasn't. It was much more dynamic. It was much more kind of embedded within the historical location. And that's just what made it so fantastic. It was really, really... Um, lovely to see the the people who'd created and produced the show had really thought about how they could engage with the space that they were putting the show onto so it was really great they had they also had this kind of group of female narrators um, and they were women who were in kind of period costumes they were kind of all white and then they had um like blue i think like, a blue skirt and then a blue um stays like corset and stays and um they were they kind of like narrated things so as a scene was changing they might kind of all stand at the front and, and each woman had a different line to um to say and that kind of like helped with like the changing of scenes or sometimes it just happened as um you know if like Barack and uh, Shardlake were going from uh, the prison to the church or whatever it would kind of they would be walking around the stage and around them people would be bringing props in and changing the scene and stuff it just felt very considered and very slick, to be honest, even though it was quite obvious that people were changing sets and changing props. It just felt really, um, really well done. Really, really well done. One thing that I thought translated really, really well to stage, and I'm assuming it will translate quite well to TV as well, is the humour. Now, you might be like, humour? Shard Lake? <laughs> There's no humour in the Shard Lake novels. And there's not in the novels, but the way that they wrote Barack, and it wasn't even that they wrote him different to how he is in the book. It's just that when you hear someone or when you see somebody interacting with someone and going, I'm going to swear now, so I'll have to beep it out, maybe. Mm. So I'll just say swearing. When he says something like, um, schmarschmull, imagine the swear word that sounds like schmarschmull. Um, and when he's going, oh, schmarschmull at somebody, it's just the way that he said it made it funny. And there was a bit where he and Tamsin meet, Tamazin meet for the first time and she's kind of walking away and he's like looking at her. And then she, he turns around and he like looks at Shadler and he goes, what? Like and it's just the way that he said things. It was just so, it added a little sense of humour to it, to his character that I hadn't really seen in the books. Like he is cheeky. But there's some things that just, it made me really conscious of the fact that some things can't really be conveyed on the page that are so easy to convey in person, either on the stage or on television. And that, I really liked that. I really loved the fact that that added this kind of little element of humour to his character. So I really liked it anyway, and I'm excited to see how his character 
kind of is reflected in the show, whether they decide to go down a more serious route for Barak, although I don't really see why they would do that, or whether they keep this kind of impish, slightly cheeky. And I know that in the later books, spoilers alert, spoiler alert, um, when Jack has some tragedy around him, he does become a lot more of a serious character. But especially in the early books, he's got a real cheeky chappy kind of personality, and I'm glad that they kept that in the show. Another thing in the show, which I don't think they initially intended to be humorous, but it made the audience laugh in the theatre when we were watching it, and it made me laugh to see it, were the horses. So they had horses, and they were basically somebody at the front that had, like, they were inside holding on to a horse's kind of head, like a big looked papier-mâché but it wasn't it was kind of like constructed of kind of maybe wood and bamboo or something looked like a horse's head and they were quite upright and they would trot along and then in the middle there was somebody I think they were just in like the same colour and then at the back there was someone who had a hat on their head with like a horse's um tail plume like coming out of the top of the thing and all three of them would like kind of trot across the stage together and it just reminded me of Monty Python when he's with the coconuts and they kind of run with the coconuts going... It just reminded me of that. And I think it must have done quite a lot of people in the audience as well because there was a little chuckle the first time a horse came across. And it wasn't like, it wasn't laughter that was like taking the piss. It wasn't like, oh God, look at that. That's funny because it's so bad. It just came across as a bit humorous, but it was great. It was a really good interpretation of it because obviously you can't have horses on stage. So it was a bit like, how do you get around that? And it was almost like they'd leaned into the humor of it and thought, it's going to look ridiculous. We might as well just make it a bit funny at the same time. But yeah, I thought that was really good. And that leads me on to my next point, really, which is that I thought the way that they handled some of the more sensitive moments in the book was really clever. So the main one, and I'm going to say spoiler alerts here, if you haven't read Sovereign, then maybe skip ahead a few minutes. I'll pop a number on here to the point that I stopped talking about this particular plot point. So if you don't want to know a big spoiler for the end of Sovereign, then skip ahead to this time now and then you'll miss the spoiler. Um, but I thought right at the end when Giles is killed, I thought that they handled that so sensitively because I thought it's going to be really horrible to see Barat, um, see Shardlake kill Giles in the mud and he obviously kind of holds him under the water and he drowns him and I thought how are they going to do this in fact I was actually watching it thinking are they going to slightly change it so that he has a heart attack or something like that which to be honest I wouldn't have minded because it's such a difficult thing to do on stage um obviously you can do it with film and tv shows and it's a bit more kind of accepted but on the stage it could have come across as a bit gratuitous but what they actually did instead was Giles ran as if like he would in the book he ran out into Shardlake's garden Giles ran off stage and Shardlake ran after him and then all the narrators came to the front of the stage or came to the front of the performance area and looked off they were all looking off stage towards where Shardlake and Giles had run and they narrated what happened not in a gratuitous way but um just talking about it was done really poetically I think a lot of the lines that the narrators had rhymed and they were kind of done in um, like rhyming couplet and so they kind of talked about what happened and there was a pace to it as well in the way that they said um, and he held him and he held him and he held him and there was something I can't remember those aren't the exact words but there was something like that that they did and it kind of really it, it allowed your imagination and your knowledge of the book to put the two and two together in your mind as to what was happening rather than having it happen on stage and I thought that was really clever very very cleverly done and very sensitive to the act of seeing somebody and the other thing is as well it's like how can you how can you act killing it's very hard to act killing somebody and it was a community production as well so it's not like you could get a stunt person in to do it like you would with tv so i think that the way that they handled it was just absolutely perfect exactly how it should have been done and even though we didn't get to see it we knew what was happening it didn't change the storyline in any way it just kind of thought a little bit more outside the box in terms of how to present that scene to the viewer 
And the final thing I want to say is that I absolutely loved the music and the way that they introduced music and sound into the play. So there was points, again, with um, when it got to the end and it was getting to the climax and the big reveal about what was happening and who was behind everything. They had music behind it. It was almost like what, what like I say, when you're watching a film and there's a soundtrack and the soundtrack's kind of building tension and that kind of thing. That happened and I thought that was really clever. I don't think I've ever noticed that with a stage production before i'm sure they probably do but i've never noticed it before and i noticed it in this in a good way like i noticed it and thought oh my god it's like watching a tv show it's building tension it's helping and that was really really good at that moment for really heightening the tension in that kind of climax of the show and another time i thought that they used it really well was when they were make, mimicking being on a boat and they had the sound of seagulls and a little bit of like kind of waves splashing sound and i thought that was really good it wasn't overly kind of done so it wasn't too um hammy it wasn't too like obvious it wasn't but it was just a little bit that said all oh, right okay yeah were supposed to be on a boat so there were little things like that I think even at one point there was a bit of like a raven cawing or maybe that was just like in York at the time when they filmed the the play because obviously it's open air theatre but um I just thought it was so cleverly done and the music was um right at the very very beginning they had a piece where they were singing the word sovereign and the word sovereign had been kind of created into the into the song um and I don't know I, it took me a while to realise that what they'd probably done is recorded all of that music and singing beforehand and then it was just played over the top of the show because at first when I could hear people singing Sovereign I was kind of looking at the actors and, and trying to work out if they were singing and they weren't but I don't think there will have been a live choir anywhere I think like I say what they probably have done is recorded all of the music and the soundtrack separately and then played it over the top of the performance but it was really again really beautifully well done it sounded authentic to the period um it just yeah I thought it was really really clever and they kind of started and ended it with a little bit of a nod to um I suppose Elizabethan theatre style you know um there was uh, one of the narrators came on and kind of acted as God and then King Henry VIII and they had this kind of like verbal tussle at the beginning because of course it had to tell the story of the fact that Henry, Henry had broken with Rome etc and then at the end Henry starts saying something and, and God comes back and says no I will speak now and they kind of finished it that way and I thought it was really really cleverly kind of bookended it in a theatrical way whilst still not making the whole thing very overly theatrical at all so yeah that is my kind of review I have spoken for 20 minutes but I think it's all quite relevant kind of feedback I think because it all makes me very excited to see and a little bit nervous actually to see how the tv show is going to go ahead obviously we've talked about the books talked about the fact that the tv show is coming and what we know so far we've now had seen you know I've seen <laughs> oh sorry just hit my microphone then I've seen the theatre production um, and you've heard a little about a bit about it from me so it's going to be really interesting to see how it goes on being on the tv now so we shall see I'm excited like I say it this has made me even more excited to see it on the television but it has made me more nervous in some ways because I think this Sovereign is a really, really fantastic example of how to respectfully stay true to the material whilst also making any necessary adjustments. Because I'm not going to say changes because they didn't change anything. Necessary adjustments in order to fit the type of production that is being made. So I don't know if the TV show can top that, to be honest, and we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, so that's it. That's my day. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you are not already subscribed, please do consider becoming a subscriber. If you're not already, please do consider becoming a subscriber. Um, I am so close to 500 subscribers now and I'm considering doing like a little celebration, but I don't know because not many people would celebrate getting to 500 because it's not like a massive milestone like a thousand or ten thousand but for me it's a really big number to get to and I'm really kind of thrilled and excited to be so close to it now so I may do a little bit of something who knows um 
but yes thank you so much if you are already subscribed thank you for sticking around for so long i know some of you have been here for like gosh over five years now and that's just absolutely fantastic and um, if you really like my content and you want to help support me to make more content and also to support me with my writing um goals and achievements then you please do consider joining me on patreon and i am very excited to say that i've got some patrons now whose names are currently flashing up on screen thank you very much to everybody who's a patron so far and if you want to consider becoming a patron then do click the patreon link down in my description okay i am gonna leave this here and who knows when i'll be back with another shard lake update maybe once we've got a trailer i will do a trailer reaction video exciting and yeah i will be back again soon with another video okay guys take care and i'll see you soon